Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there tonight. I hope you all had a great weekend as another weekend bites the dust. It seems like it just started, but it's over already. But, you know, that's just typically how it goes. But here we are to talk about some weather. In this evening's video, we're going to speak on basically what could happen between now and the next, I would say, two weeks. We're going to start from really what's in front of us and work a little bit further out as we get deeper into the video. You know, a lot of people in the South especially are wondering, Mitch, when are we going to get some rain? We need some rain. Um, I have not read the comments over the last few videos, but I think I kind of read a tail end of one when I got a notification earlier today saying they haven't, I think they've only got like a quarter inch of rain in the last eight weeks. I mean, that is ridiculous. We definitely need rain for a lot of areas of the South, including my neck of the woods. It's pretty dry. You got dust flying around, but it's a lot worse in other areas than in my neck of the woods here in the central sections of South Carolina. But we'll speak on all this. We'll break it down. Is there any big time storm systems to watch? I mean, what is there out there to watch weather wise? Um, so we'll, we'll try to figure it out for you folks. Like I said, we'll work to what's closest to us and then we'll work further out as we get deeper into the video. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below so I can pray over it and certain and, and others can do so too. So have not, like I said, I've not had a chance to read the comments in the last few videos and I likely won't be able to catch up until probably tomorrow afternoon. So if you put prayer requests in there, I have not quite got to them yet and always tears my nerves up. Uh, but I like to spend time on these comments and not just jump on them if I got five or ten minutes to spare and just kind of breeze through them. I like to kind of uh, create a, a certain amount of time for them so I can uh, spend some time with them. So I'll get to them. So with that being said, let's get rolling. So what's going on out there right now? Well, uh, we have this first system that you know was affecting areas of the Pacific Northwest at the beginning of the weekend, uh, this system has moved into the northern portion of the country, bringing good old-fashioned just rain in the Dakotas, uh, some lighter rain in areas of the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes region. But it's definitely kind of a, a, a damp, <clears throat> excuse me, a damp um, a Sunday evening out there for you folks to end your weekend. But another system has already entered the western sections of Washington and Oregon and northern California, and this will continue to become more widespread across this area of the country. A little bit well deeper and as we get deeper into the nighttime everybody else guys it's quiet the flow is kind of jolted to the north and we'll speak more on what that means um, as we get deeper into the video but man everybody else is quiet there's not a whole lot going on guys so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what can happen between basically now and this next weekend coming up what's gonna happen basically weather wise this week we'll compare the GFS and the European I'll speak on the European first, and uh, then we'll work a little bit further out. But what is there to watch this week? Well, like I just showed you, you got a system entering the Pacific Northwest right now, and that is this system right here. And this is starting off for tomorrow morning. Um, this system that uh, basically a low pressure is cutting right across the Great Lakes. So all the cold air is in Canada right now. Okay, if you're along this low pressure in south, this is warm air. I mean, not, you know, really, really warm, but way too warm for winter weather. Even for you folks in the UP of Michigan, we're, we're starting to get to the time of the year where we see, I wouldn't say necessarily more winter weather than just good old-fashioned rain, but you start having higher chances of winter weather compared to just good old-fashioned rain, if you get what I'm saying. But, you know, this system will continue to kind of move across the northern areas of the lower 48, and... For Maine, where there's a little bit more cold air, like in the northern sections of Maine, this could fall in the form as some snow. And as we're getting into, you know, our Tuesday morning, uh, could be some snow changing to rain in northern Maine. And then this heads out. And then at the same time, we got some moisture cruising across the northern Rockies. Not really much for the southwest. And, you know, this next low pressure takes a very similar route, right? You know, it begins to kind of move over the same areas at this point you probably have a little bit more cold air over the northeast. So for our Thursday morning, and for you folks in the northeast watching this, wondering, Mitch, can you get a little bit closer? I'm going to get closer for you folks and uh, get details as far as how much winter weather you could potentially see, how much rain, things like that. But there's a little bit more cold air kind of oozed in south. So we could have some 
some some like a wintery mix, some freezing rain, some snow for areas of the northern northeast. I'm not talking about Boston to New York City, not not along the coastline, maybe the coastline of Maine uh, for a period. But yeah, and then we get into the weekend and then the next system will be to watch is this one. You know, getting into our Friday, you know, I wouldn't say quite the weekend yet, but we could get some rain for southeast Texas and some rain for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. How much rain, though? Extending all the way into the mid-Atlantic as we're getting to our Friday evening, and there's some cold air beginning to ooze down a little bit further south based off the Euro, and then we start to get to the end of the weekend, and then this is when things get kind of fuzzy. Okay, so we won't speak on that yet. We'll, we'll mainly focus in on what's in front of us. The GFS, what does it show? Same thing with that first system. Here it is starting off as some snow, maybe some moderate snow in northern Maine. The GFS looks like it dumps a little bit more snow for you folks on this first system for northern Maine. That's about it. Okay, and then this next system flies in. Okay, this brings a little bit of snow for the extreme northern sections of North Dakota, Minnesota, uh, Tuesday evening-ish. Uh, you know, I say ish because... Timing could be a little different. We get into our Wednesday morning. Could you get a little bit of a wintery mix in the UP of Michigan? The GFS is saying there is a possibility of that. Okay. Um, but this ridge is really bulging in, bringing a lot of warm air aloft. So we'll see what happens with this. And there's that low pressure really developing and getting stronger here now. So, you know, you get on the other side of Lake Superior. This is a probably, you know, a, a decent sized winter weather event. But the UP of Michigan and Michigan and the Great Lakes region, mainly rain. But, you know, the GFS is flirting with the idea of this being cold enough for the UP, sections of the UP, to see some winter weather. So we'll, we'll continue to fine tune the details on that. Notice I'm not talking about the West much because the West really gets quiet. But like I said, this is when it gets interesting for the Northeast. You know, we're starting off Thursday morning, November 9th. Well, the wintry mix as far southeast as the Adirondacks, I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe all the way down to like the Catskills is very possible. Um, and then we just have to watch out for a wintry mix sometime Thursday, maybe into Thursday night for the northern sections of the northeast. And like I said, there's that next rainmaker. Well, we're finally seeing, seeing a rainmaker is a be better way to put it. Starts off as rain in, in eastern and southeast and south Texas as we're getting into Friday morning. And then this starts to overspread more so areas of the deep south. How much rain is going to fall from this? We're going to talk about that. Well, you know, we don't know the exact details of this, but we're going to talk about it. But, you know, it does show rain. It shows kind of a rainy weekend potential, potential for areas of the southeast. We'll watch this. Uh, for you folks, but it does show a trough dig towards the end of the weekend around this time next weekend uh, We could have a kind of injection of cold air into the northeast. Got to watch that But let's go on and get a little bit closer For you folks in the northeast with this system a system moves in kind of late Monday night into Tuesday morning covering some light precipitation across the interior sections of the northeast uh, This could fall in the form of some light snow up here in northern Maine Okay and then we watch our next system, and there could be a little cold air back behind us where there's some snow showers uh, for the higher elevations of the interior northeast of New England. It's very possible. And then our next system moves in, okay? This is the wee hours of the morning this Thursday morning. Look at this ice showing up, okay? You know, it even wants to try to start this off as a little snow in Boston, okay? We got to see how much cold air is oozed down. Okay, in all areas of the atmosphere, this could be a mixed bag here for sure. But you already look at the placement of the low pressure. It's definitely cutting, okay? But we get into later in the morning, Thursday morning, I mean, this could linger around as a freezing rain event for kind of southern sections of Vermont and New Hampshire. And then watch the Adirondacks, guys. Okay, and then we start to move into Thursday afternoon. How heavy does the precipitation remain in Maine? We, we got to watch that, but... I definitely think that we could get some winter weather for sections of Vermont, New Hampshire, and even northeast and northern sections of New York State, maybe even western Mass, like the higher hilly region and western Mass. It's, it's, it's very possible that you guys could see a wintery mix sometime Thursday morning. So after that, it's, it's, it's kind of just a wait-and-see game for the weekend. A weekend could be a tricky forecast also for the northeast. There's a couple things that could change. But it's mainly those two systems we're watching. So how much snow? Well, the blend of all models going for a couple inches of snow. 
You guys got several inches of snow in northern Maine a few days ago. Could get a couple more inches of snow. I and mean, we're getting deep into winter at this point for you folks. Could see a couple inches of snow from northern Maine and maybe a little bit of snow, especially these higher elevations of Vermont, Vermont New Hampshire. Maybe a dusting of snow in the Adirondacks. Um, but check this out. There's a little signal for a little bit of freezing rain, maybe a few one hundredths of an inch of ice. It's very possible with this. I could definitely see this. So you're good. You know, you, it's not just snow in this. And this is mainly for that Thursday storm, right? But you could get some freezing rain for some of these areas and the higher elevations of New England. So we need to watch for this and see if the ice totals do increase. Do we start to see tenth of an inch of ice starting to show up? That's when we can start to have some issues. So, uh, Kind of moving and looking at this potential rain event for the south. I'm, gonna, I'm kind of taking more of a broad look at this. And we're going to take a look at tropical tidbits. As we're getting into uh, about mid to late work, we, mid to late week, this work week, and here comes the rain beginning to develop this uh, Thursday afternoon. Kind of a, an area of rain develops all the way um, into kind of the Boot Hill, Missouri, all the way up into Kentucky. And then do we get some kind of low pressure that pops off down here? Show some heavy rain kind of Friday afternoon for Southeast Texas. And then this begins to potentially overspread the deep south, Alabama, Mississippi. And we need rain in the southern apps, too, of Tennessee and North Carolina, even North Georgia. We need some rain. We have severe drought conditions, even into the southern Appalachian Mountains here. We, the last thing we need is another, like, Gatlinburg situation in 2016 when we had the terrible wildfires. So we need some rain. And, and I'll be honest, this system does not look like it's delivering a lot, but it certainly looks like it's delivering some sort of accumulation of rain i'll tell you that but we're getting into saturday show some rain over the carolinas areas of georgia and then we get into the next week and that's just when we get a little bit too far out now we look at the european what does it show with this rain and here it comes right now there's some rain developing over areas of texas um, it's a lot more heavy rain over areas of oklahoma arkansas these are kind of areas of, of the country that certainly have made up for the rain i mean they could probably use it but if you look at the drought conditions in these areas you're no longer in a drought southern areas of oklahoma could still use the rain but um moving this forward here friday afternoon you get you got an area of rain showing up for the mid-atlantic kind of west virginia maryland uh, northern virginia and then we got some appreciable rain falling in areas of louisiana where we really need it uh, you know, some of these areas in yellow, that's heavier rain. So the European, you're getting into Friday evening, showing some very beneficial rains falling across Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, even across the mountainous regions of North Carolina and Tennessee and Virginia. So hopefully this comes to friction. I really hope it does. Getting into Saturday morning, a little bit of a rainy weekend could potentially get going across the southeast as a low pressure tries to develop here. So, one thing I've mentioned many times, guys, and look at this. Oof, that comes close to doing something crazy for the Northeast, but that's getting pretty far out. One thing I've mentioned, guys, as we go on and start looking at the drought monitor, the, the new one was issued on November 2nd, so it's a couple days old. But if you look down here in the Burgundy areas, that's an exceptional drought. Uh, the areas in red is a, an extreme drought, and then the areas in that orange is a severe drought. So, Drought conditions are doing nothing but worsening. You know, it's it's pretty dry up in Iowa. <clears throat> you have an exceptional drought, D4 drought in areas of Nebraska. So we, we continue to really need the rain. All right, and in Texas. But I definitely think all these areas will see rain. That's the good news. But what I was trying to say, guys, is, is I really think that uh, we're gonna we're gonna eventually see a switch to an El Nino type pattern. But I I will I will admit. It's very odd that we have not begun to see the impacts of an El Nino yet. Um, typically, we're already starting to see the impacts. The southern jet is already beginning to get active. And basically, we're already starting to see a lot of rainstorms across the deep south. Maybe some chilly rains, too. So it's kind of odd it hasn't happened yet. But I, I just have a hunch that things are just going to flip. We're going to go from hardly getting no rain to a lot of it. So we'll see what happens. But this is rainfall between now and this time next week, so basically a week, you know, an inch or two of rain is possible uh, in southeast Texas, okay? 
The further you move northwest in Texas, the less rain you see. You go into the deep south. Now, this is an area a lot more people are interested in here. You know, we go all the way out to next Monday morning. It's not a ton. Okay, Louisiana, a solid inch, inch and a quarter. Um, it's not a ton of rain from Mississippi and Alabama, but I, I tell you what, uh, you know, three-fourths of an inch, an inch of rain would do wonders to these areas right now. I mean, it would help things a lot. We need more, but we'll take it, okay? And this could just be storm number one. Things could begin to get more active after this, but this is potential rainfall between now and next week, and I think this will happen, like I said, a little bit later into this work week, into this weekend, okay? But this is good news. Now, let's take a look at our folks in the Carolinas. Um, you know, some rains, some higher chances of rains could come into the picture later this week into this weekend. You know, we really need the rain here in the Western Carolinas. The higher elevations really need the rain. We need to rain fast, but hopefully we will get it. Okay, so if you're wondering why I'm not showing Florida, Florida does not look like they're going to get a whole lot of rain over the next week, but we'll continue to watch and fine tune things. So, moving past kind of the week time frame, right? We, we're going to look at the Climate Prediction Center here. This is the six to ten day temperature outlook. It runs from the 11th to the 15th of this month. It was issued today. Above average temperatures beginning. Um, well, they already kind of have began to, but will really continue to dominate the northern portion of the country, but Above average temperatures also for the southeast, maybe around near normal temperatures for a lot of Texas and the western U.S. But the only area that's kind of saved from warmer temperatures is the northeast where you guys really have an opportunity to just stay at or below average temperature wise. Now the 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook looks very dry for the Ohio Valley, the northeast, and the upper portion of the country. There's some hints though that we're starting to get to a more active pattern down here with more precipitation. There is a equal chance of near normal uh, precipitation, but there is a chance here in the green that we could get above average precipitation. Not very high. Um, now, I mean, it's getting kind of high for areas of South Texas and even, you know, it's higher for areas of Florida. But what we want to hope for is that we can get a more active southern jet track down here, more storm systems. Okay, but man, if you're a cooler weather fan like me, you really don't like to see this. Most of the country is going to get dominated by like a country-wide ridge, meaning a ridge is basically going to be built over most of the lower 48. So what is that going to do? It's basically going to bring us well above average temperatures. So I really think for the, at least the first half of November, we're going to be sitting at above average temperatures. And I'm going to talk about why here in a second. I don't want to just show you this and not really explain why, but there is a reason why. But man, even get, getting into the Northeast, so it definitely looks like um, no widespread freeze up for the country. But if you look at the 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook, this is really beginning to look like that zonal flow. Even though you still see some kind of hills and valleys with this, I mean, this is a pretty huge area that has at least a small chance to see above average precipitation, right? Um, and then there's a kind of small to a moderate risk of below average precipitation. But this tells me that there's no real high confidence either way of any kind of extreme amount of weather one way or the other. Okay, so one thing that's going to dominate the pattern. We've talked about this, especially in the tropics. We'll continue to talk about in the winter. The orange you see on your screen, that is ridging. That's high pressure. The blue is low pressure, troughing. Think of the blue that you see on your screen as a below average temperatures. Not immediately associated with it, but it typically brings some kind of storm system and below average temperatures. Orange, above average precipitation. So we'll start this about midweek this week, right? You notice this ridge begins to shift and really dominate the eastern U.S., okay? And then you have a trough that potentially shows up over the northern uh, the northern sections of the lower 48, the Great Lakes region, the upper Midwest, places like that. Okay, but it's very brief. It swings over these areas. We watch for just a stormy, some storminess up there, right? And maybe a quick shot of cool air. But what happens after that into this weekend and then again into early next week? And there it is. That is why your Climate Prediction Center is showing above average above average temperatures for the foreseeable future. Now you do have a pattern into the Northwest as we're getting into early next week that does support storminess. 
See this low pressure to me, it tells me that the storm track is probably cruising right into the west coast and then up into Canada. So the jet stream probably next week is going to be jolted all the way up into Canada. Everybody south of it, I mean, you, that doesn't mean you're not going to get weather south of it. You could get, 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 could get like some storm systems and um, things like that that could fly under the ridge. It's, it's definitely possible. But for the most part, temperature-wise, above average temperatures are going to dominate the pattern. In fact, you get just a full-fledged uh, negative PNA kind of look where you got troughing in the west and the ridging in the east. And do we get a flip of this pattern? At this point, we're getting to, you know, getting really close to Thanksgiving at this point. This becomes a more unreliable time frame. But even then, you know, we got to get all the way out to, I mean, I would say Monday the 20th before it looks like we have any more cooler weather that shows up. And that's, like I said, a very unreliable time frame. So next thing you look at, guys, is the jet stream. So we know the jet stream sits at about 30 35-ish thousand feet up in the air. So 250 millibars is what you're looking at. You know, give or, give or take a couple thousand feet. But in general, where you see these kind of vibrant colors, that's right around where the jet is. That's just basically where the storm system track is going to be. So we'll start this off around this time next week. So this is starting off a week from today. And what you'll notice here is look how this thing jolts way up here. So the general storm track, you see where these streamlines are kind of doing like this? kind of going like that and then they're cruising up here and then they take a drastic dip down here this is why the northeast could stay a little cooler but man the main storm track is going way up here that doesn't mean you're not going to get any precipitation down here into this region okay or even down here into this region okay but the main storm track is is digging down here do we get some kind of active jet that gets going down here it's very possible very possible so it's just a lot of things you got to watch out for um, but I can tell you, in general, you keep this going, guys. And uh, to me, this looks like a big trough setting up out west and then a cutter kind of pathway setting up where you got storm systems that are riding across the middle of the country. This is when you start to watch for severe weather threats in November. When these storm systems kind of go right in the middle of the country, brings up more moist air from the Gulf, and that spells secondary severe weather trouble. So we'll watch that. Um, but yeah, this is getting way out, but... Yeah, it's, it just looks like a pattern that does not really support anything crazy, guys. It really does um, in an above-average temperature pattern. And, you know, you start to get into next week and you look at the GFS, and we all know the GFS can do some wild things in the long range, and it keeps wanting to flirt with the idea of some kind of tropical system in the Caribbean. And we will watch that. Um, it's, it's possible. But, you know, there it is. You get 10 days out. You got a little bit of another little snow system that rides across the upper areas of the uh, the the northeast and then we start to get the ejection of some kind of storm system that moves into the southwest and then cruises across the middle of the country and like i said that's when you watch the severe weather events these little systems like this now this is really far out i'm not saying we're going to have a severe weather event here in a couple weeks but just kind of saying we, we watch for that jet stream dip out west and the ridge in the east that's when we can get our severe weather now i can tell you a little bit in the shorter term, you know, it's weird. The European around early next next week has a lot of cold air really close by a low pressure right here. And we got to watch this. This is a kind of a big blast of cold air that moves into the northeast. I want to watch this. And you got a low pressure really close by getting really close to some cold air. We'll watch that. But after that moves through, we don't know what happens after that because the euro only goes 10 days out. So, um you know, you look at precipitation between now and the next 14 to 15 days. It uh, looks pretty dry in the high plains, okay? But, you know, look at this. This is a good sign for us in the south. And even though the jet is way up here, we can still get storm systems, okay? They kind of fly on this southern jet. Um, it, it's very possible that we can still consistently get some rains. But we have to watch, guys. Um, I really... I'm confident we're going to get rain from this system this week, you know, and then, you know, but what happens after that? You know, you look at the east between now and Monday morning of the 20th, you know, it does look like we get some around normal kind of precipitation. Um, we need this rain badly here in the deep south. Two to three inches of rain over the next couple of weeks would do wonders. 
it'd still be in drought conditions, but it would help a lot. So, guys, that's pretty much all I got. There's there's nothing too crazy to talk about. There's nothing to really latch on to as far as a topic. It's just easy as she goes. Really, the, the thing we're hunting down the most right now is rain. And, and for my folks around the Tampa Bay area that are under – you know, an extreme drought, severe drought. Now, unfortunately, you know, it doesn't look like you guys are going to get a lot of rain anytime soon. Some rain here and there, um, but I don't want to leave you guys out in Florida. So, guys, that's all I got. God bless all y'all. Thank y'all for the support. There probably won't be a whole lot of evening videos this week. Just ain't a whole lot to talk about, guys. Um, It really isn't. So, thank y'all for supporting me during these slow times. It's... um. Looks like it's going to be at least a slow first half of November. So um, God bless all y'all. Thank y'all for the support again. And y'all have a great rest of your weekend and an awesome start to your week. God bless.